Copilot and other generative AI tools have been all the craze and honestly, it's justified. These tools are changing the world as we know it, but it begs the question, are these changes good? Let's talk about the five things you don't know and I recently learned about Copilot that are making me think twice about when I'm using it at work. Before using any tool, you should know exactly how it works, especially when Microsoft Copilot is targeted at organizations to boost their work by using generative AI in things like Outlook, teams and their CRM apps. As a business or a user, it's important to know how Copilot actually works, how it's developed, and some of the pitfalls of using Copilot. Because let's be honest, Copilot is far from perfect and our fifth topic today is gonna explain why. If you learned something today, be sure to let me know in the comments down below or if there's something I did not cover about Copilot, tell me about it down there as well. The first and most important thing to know about Copilot is it does not store any organizational or conversational data. This has many pros and cons. For our pros, this helps boost security in your organization. The knowledge sources that you give Copilot access to are not at risk if the Copilot were to be hacked. Security is probably the largest consideration for organizations on if they should use it and Microsoft has communicated their confidence countless times in Copilot's ability to protect against data threats. This is a double-edged sword because that means if you close out of a Copilot conversation, you're not gonna be able to pick up that conversation where you left off. Say for example, if you are using Copilot to write a sales email to a customer and it spits out a email output, if you don't copy and paste Copilot's output and you were to close out of Copilot, then you're not gonna be able to access that. Because of all this, Copilot does not learn from the conversations that are happening within your organization, and that means that Copilot is not going to get better over time. This is for your specific organization. As Microsoft were to update the large language models, you would get that boost in efficiency, but Copilot is not learning things like the details of your organization's industry or anything like that. Anything that would be related to your organization is not training Copilot in any way. The second thing that I bet you did not know about Copilot is that Copilot is actually made up of hundreds of Copilots. There's a Microsoft Word Copilot, an Excel Copilot, a PowerPoint Copilot. There's even Outlook and Teams Copilots. There's Bing Enterprise Copilot. There's Sales Copilots, Marketing Copilots, Field Service and Customer Service Copilots. Sorry, I got carried away there. The point is that Microsoft Copilot may feel like a single experience to the user, but Microsoft is developing all these different Copilots individually. This means that as there are different bug fixes and updates to these Copilots, this isn't going to affect all the Copilots in total. Whether this is a good or bad thing, I will let you decide. The third thing I bet you did not know about Microsoft Copilot is that it is built on top of OpenAI's ChatGBT. ChatGPT, to my understanding, was the first of its kind in natural language processing and the generative AI capabilities. And Microsoft has licensed what are called the large language models, also known as LLMs, from OpenAI. Essentially, ChatGPT's contributions to Copilot is the ability to understand natural language, process it, develop an output, and then spit an output back out to the user. Microsoft is now responsible for developing and maintaining Copilot on top of the LLM. Microsoft is responsible for developing Copilot, fixing potential bugs in Copilot, etc. If OpenAI were to change its LLM, this would not affect Copilot as they are now separate. For our cleanup hitter in our number four spot is going to be Copilot Labs. Copilot Labs is something I had actually never heard of until I was studying Copilot for this video. I am gonna be making a future video covering Copilot Labs in a little bit more detail, so if you are interested in that, be sure to subscribe. But what is Copilot Labs? Copilot Labs is a space to turn a good prompt into a great one. Share your favorite prompts with coworkers and get inspired as we all learn how to work in a whole new way together. Copilot is a space to turn a good prompt into a great one. Share your favorite prompts with coworkers and people in your organization. This could be super useful as a library of sorts of good Copilot prompts and over time is gonna be built up and shared across your organization to answer super common questions or actions that you would need the Copilot to do. 
I think this is super cool and something I was not aware of and so I'm really excited to dive in and learn more about this. I do know there isn't a ton of information out there about Copilot Labs currently, but I'll be sure to cover those when the time comes. The fifth thing I bet you did not know when using Copilot is actually a pretty big limitation. One of the Microsoft's fundamental principles in their approach to AI is what's called fairness. Fairness is essentially making sure that the outputs of AI are not biased. And one thing you need to keep in mind when using Copilot is Copilot is not inherently bias resistant. While it is a principle of Microsoft to not facilitate bias, Copilot is only as fair as its knowledge base. This means that Copilot's output may be biased because its input or the knowledge base is biased. A large limitation is that Copilot is completely dependent on the knowledge sources your organization has given it. Bad data is going to cause Copilot to be effectively useless. Now hold on, there is still something you can do to level up your co-pilot regardless of the knowledge base that it's looking at. The best part is, it's something that you have total control over and can begin implementing today. You're gonna have to watch this short video here to see what it is. Like I said in the beginning, let me hear what you learned in the comments down below. If you did not learn anything, that's okay. But go ahead and put your favorite emoji down there. It helps engagement. Thank you guys so much for sticking to the end of the video. My name is Griffin Lickfelt the host of Citizen Developer. I'm excited to connect with you guys in the next one.